Have you ever been to a shelter? No, but I've come very, very close. I remember in 2016 when I was hospitalized, I was almost uh, nearly homeless, but I managed to find a place. But those couple of weeks when I thought I was going to have to stay in shelter were probably the worst weeks of my life. Hey y'all, it's Onika. And JR. And you are dishing with Dainty Dish. How are you doing, JR? I'm doing okay. I'm just kicking it. I actually care how you're doing today. So Do you? Uh, yeah. So I'm doing good. It's it's Saturday afternoon. Oh, we're doing this on the Saturday. But uh so I'm good. How are you? I really care this week. I'm doing well. My ankles healed up pretty nicely. From I don't the care about that. Fall. I don't care about that. You don't care about that? Not that specific incident. Okay, that specific incident's over with, so yeah. we'll just move on from it. But I'm doing okay. Um, it's been a, it's kind of been a little bit of a struggle recently since I've had to um, break up with my therapist. My mental health day is not going the way I would want it to, but I'm still seeing my psychiatrist, making sure, you know, my meds are straight and I'm getting that all in order. So that's good. Um, and I do see my social worker as well. Lots going on in my personal life, but I'm not going to share too much about that today because, you know, something's on the on the horizon and I'm, I'm hoping things work out well. And if they do, I will let you I will let you know. OK. OK. Well, we do have a guest on the show today, a returning guest, actually. Yes. Anna is back on the show. Anna, say hello. Hi, guys. How are you? You know something? I'm awesome. I feel fantastic. You feel fantastic? Yeah. That's good. Good, the bad, and the ugly, but today I'm feeling really good. That's good. So we're all feeling good today. We're all feeling good. We're all (laughs) feeling good. That's good. That's good. Um, But, Anna, we wanted to have you back on the show today because you have a very interesting and poignant and a little bit sad of a story to tell us. Mm -hmm. And um, we really want to hear it. And, you know, we have a couple questions for you as well. So, um, you know, why don't you tell us what's going on with you? Absolutely. First and foremost, thanks for having me back, guys. So looking forward to this. Well, this week has been a little more challenging. Um, I like when Nico was saying, have you ever been in a shelter? Well, I have, and I've had some pretty bad experiences with it. And this week is no different. I was living at a transitional housing uh, place for the last um, 11 months, and... You know, they tell you, oh, come stay with us. We'll make it safe. We'll make it um, that will help you out. They settle you in, and then they do the magician disappearing act. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nowhere do they, you know, help you find a, a permanent resident. They're supposed to. They are supposed to be there as your advocate. They're supposed to be there as your support system. And, like, this week for me, for example, my time was done at the place where I was staying. And they told me on the 15th, the Friday, before the long weekend, family day weekend, well, your time is done. No resources on where to go. No nothing. You give you your walking papers. And I'm like, what? Well, we're done at you know, two, so you better get yourself organized. And where am I going to go? Well, you know, you um, you don't have anywhere to go? No. And where were you guys where we were supposed to look for housing? Like, housing is seven to ten year wait. Did you think it was going to happen overnight? Heck no. It doesn't. Wait, sorry. Sorry, you said seven to ten year wait for for... Like public housing for thing? so like for that. social ser- like like there's a social service disability like there's a housing list. Okay. Um, in every city they have a housing list, and it's anywhere from seven to ten years when you place your name on this list mm-hmm. for um, subsidized housing. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's a subsidized housing list. Um, there's a seven to ten wait like time wait period. Um, people hear this number all the time. I'm actually on that social services uh, wait list myself. I put myself on it about three years ago, um, just in case I ever might need it. But the wait list is very, very long. And it doesn't really matter your circumstance. You could be pregnant. You could be 
you could have diabetes like like um and struggle yeah. with your your yeah. physical health it doesn't matter that's the wait list and that's that's the that's the time period oh, okay i i didn't I, I don't know much about i know when i was growing up there was a a house on my street that was was part of that program mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh other than that I, I i don't know really much about it so you you put yourself on this list you're you you have to wait seven to ten years but during that time you're expected to fend for yourself is that is that pretty much pretty much okay so like you're you're given the option of you know well you can stay at this hostel or whatever they call it like a homeless shelter and stuff like that but then you're living in a homeless shelter where you're not really you don't have a lot of control you're told when to eat you're told when to go to sleep you're told what you can and cannot do your meals are Regimented being diabetic was never given an option of not having the carbs. Well, that's what we have. Eat it. You don't. You go hungry. Mm. Mm-hmm. But my biggest uh, beef or whatever is is that where where does the advocate like her, their advocate role stop and where do they work with us instead of? You know, like against us, yes, I'm a grown ad- uh, adult, I get it. And yes, I, you know, I started looking for a place, you know, a bachelor apartment right now is like $1,500. You mm. don't have to tell me. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? And you, and you think, oh, where, where am I going to get $1,500? I'm not working. I'm only making X amount of dollars on LW. But where is the support? Where is the respect where is the oh come into my office and let's talk about it not here's your papers and say okay see ya could it be that there's there's such a strain on the system that there's so many people that are in need that it's just they have to say you know what um first in first out kind of thing is is is, is it pretty much that where we are it's like not even 11 months in one day sorry you gotta go of all times, like, it's like, you know, about a month ago, the stress of everything, then on top of everything else, like, my, you know, my meds were stolen from me to use to do whatever else with it, so that stands in the way, and you tell them about stuff like that, and it's like, well, you know, what can we do about it? Let's get me to a doctor. Let's get me some help saying, okay, we'll advocate for this, but not, and now it's like I have the generosity of someone that has opened their door to me and will forever be grateful type of thing and it's like we've done more in four days than they've done in four months mm-hmm. let's go do this let's try this why don't we try this why don't we try this let's get your meds let's get you focused back on this and you stop and you think wait a second that's what your your peer worker that's what your your first there like at wherever you're staying, whether it's you know top of the line or bottom of the list, where is the support? Like where is it that you draw you as an individual have to draw the line and then you step up mm-hmm. and say I want to make some noise now. Mm-hmm. And even that, then you start to make a little bit of the noise and you're shunned upon. Like when I left there on. Uh, Wednesday, yeah, like I was wandering the streets with my suitcase. It was cold. It was scary. It was scary. It's very scary not knowing what to do next. And this isn't your first experience um, with homelessness, is no, it? No. Um. So let's. I just want to go back to that. I know we sure. probably covered it in the last episode, but sure. just what is the what is that like? Like what is that? What is that feeling? What is that? Well, emotion behind that um, you feel abandoned abandonment is a big one you feel abandoned by people that have put you in this homeless shelter or unfortunately have not have not been you know helpful in that they um, like I feel I feel personally because I'm going to bring it back to me I was in in one shelter in particular for like two weeks when I first started and I literally sat on my bed and rocked back and forth. And I thought, well, this is scary. 
I was threatened in it. People were saying that, you know, like one girl in particular, one of my roommates, she said to me, well, you got to turn off your phone because that's where the, whatever, the aliens are coming through and they're stealing brain cells. You want to really look at them and say, it's too late. We can't, right? My <laughs> phone was thrown out of a window. They said, you're lucky you didn't go with it. <laughs> I was attacked by one girl in particular, big, huge girl, and she was so big. And I'm, you know, far from stretching my imagination, I'm not a little girl. But she threatened me with, like, she took um, stuff from me and then made me feel crazy that I never had it. Mm-hmm. Right? So you feel, like, intimidated. You feel scared. You feel, again, abandoned. You feel betrayed. Some pretty harsh words, but that's how you feel. And is there always usually supposed to be some kind of... Because, again, I've never experienced um, being in a shelter or uh, being dealing with um, homelessness issues. So is there always supposed to be some kind of a support system within these shelters to help you guys transition into a home? Absolutely. From your caseworker to the front line to your... I mean, obviously, your your people that you deal with in there, whether they are supervisors or like the chaplain or whoever, somebody's always got to, you know, pick up that stick and like a relay race. Okay, pass it to me now. Okay, so I'm going to go do my thing. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing about being homeless or being in a homeless environment is if you're going to go find out information for me, bring it back to me. Don't mm -hmm. just assume that I know. Well, she's, you know, I'm looking out for her. No. I need to know where you are so I can pick up the stick from there and move on because this is my life. You're messing with my space, my life right now. Mm -hmm. And I never would have thought that, you know, I would have ever felt like that. But you do. Unfortunately, um, you do. And it's it's kind of like a surreal Again, you wake up in the middle of the night. You're like, "Where am I?" It's like, "Okay, never mind. I'm safe. I have a, I have a, a, a roof over my head." Okay, I had a girl in my room that slept with me for. I was in another shelter for just a little over a year. I mean, I always had to sleep with one eye open. One night, she's standing over my bed, and she goes, "I will slash you in your sleep." So you run downstairs to front desk. Oh, she's just having an episode. Um, okay. Am I going to be her victim? Am I going to be somebody that she's going to hurt? Why do I have to be afraid? Why? Why so is there that always like that constant feeling of danger and like feeling Fear. unsafe? Fear. Fear is the biggest. Like being afraid for your life, being afraid for your mental health. You know, we are already in that dark place. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want to be is you know, locked up in a room with a bunch of people that are, again, in the same boat you're in. And I'm very, very, very empathetic to that stuff. Don't get me wrong. But um, where's my empathy? Where's it coming back? Where's a little bit of that support? Like now I have people emailing me, oh, are you safe? Do you really care? Hmm. Right? Your caseworkers that were supposed to be there, now you care? Nah. So now I'm good. I'm, I'm going to go do my own thing. I will heal. And then I will rise again, then look up. The end of the day, it's just, as selfish it may, as it may sound, it's all about me. I'm going to get to that again. It's where it's all about me. I don't wish shelter life on anybody. I don't care what the situation is. You should always have a safe haven to go to. Again, that's a, that's the whole thing. A safe haven to go to. When you walk in a door and somebody says, Welcome. This is home right now. Not, oh, here comes, you know, file number 845-703. I'm not a number. I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. In a situation that, and no, I didn't put myself in this situation. It's a situation that happened do you think I want to be homeless? Do you think I want to... Don't know where my next meal is coming from? No. I want to be happy. 
I want to be even. I'll even settle for content right now. I want to be. I want to feel safe. Mm-hmm. So, what has this um, been doing to your mental health? Like, how has this been affecting? Because I know you mentioned mental health a little bit earlier just now, mm-hmm. but how has this been affecting your mental health? Um, dealing with the stress of being um, displaced, essentially. It's just making me again get to the point of um, like I start doubting myself again. Like it makes me think of irrational thoughts again. Mm-hmm. Especially the irrational thoughts that are, you know, when you when you think irrational thoughts in, in situations, it's like you can think about them and you brush them off, right? But when you have a plan in, in motion mm-hmm. where you know exactly what you want to do, it's scary. Mental. You know, you get... It, it's like, where do I draw that line? Who do I... Like, how could I help? I could help myself. Self-care, for sure. But even that, am I worth it? I feel worthless. That's how I feel. So that's how it's affecting my mental health. It's making me feel like that little... You know, that little frightened little... Uh, bunny in a corner thinking, oh dear God, now what? Who's going to come and run me over? Yeah, pretty much. And what are you doing for yourself for self-care? I know you have a couple of things going on in your life outside of all of this, but what are you? how are you taking care of yourself right now? Right now, taking care of myself is being, read my scriptures. I love to read doing a lot of resting, doing a lot of sleeping. Um, I'm still doing the crocheting stuff, which I love to do. (laughs) We know you you love your crocheting. Reaching out. I've got a lot of wonderful peers that I'm reaching out to and, you know, catching up on what what can I do? Or, you know, asking for help. I'm not ashamed anymore to ask for help. That's good. You know, making sure that I feel good about myself and making sure that I smile and making sure that I'm not, I don't get up in the morning and think, oh God, it's, it's going to be okay today. Make what I make of it. Mm. One day at a time, I guess. That's, Amen. That's, that's, the, that's, you can do. that's the process, right? Oh. So. Homelessness, Toronto. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the, on the podcast before, but there's a gentleman that there's a homeless gentleman that sleeps in in yeah. my in my lobby. I think um, mm-hmm. I'm cool with it; like it doesn't bother me at all. But obviously, there's like a thousand users sitting here, mm-hmm. <laughs> and if one person complains, you got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. But I- I'm. I'm a little confused on, on, on the homeless situation in, in, in Toronto. Um, is it a byproduct of being lazy? Is it a byproduct of... Um, not caring about yourself? Like, what what causes homelessness? Because I've, I've, I know I've come across some some people that have been homeless that okay, you're literally down on your luck. Like, you... (laughs) You're here because you're here. Mm -hmm. But then you meet people that, okay, you've got... My 5 o'clock shadow is is, is less than yours. um, And... I don't see why you're out here. Like, you look like someone... And this is just a perception, but you like someone that could probably just, you know go take a shower at the gym and then go get a job on Bay Street, you know, like, so I don't know what, what really, what really causes the homeless situation and how do we really, I guess, fight it or, or reverse it, correct it. Like I, cause you're saying shelters don't seem to work. They don't, they don't work. And I guess that's the reason why I see so many people that are sleeping out on the street or someone sleeping in my lobby because they'd rather do that than be in a in a shelter um 
so I just I, I don't know I just kind of want to let's talk about that like I don't know I'm, I, I want to know more about what what causes homelessness why what and why is it such a problem and uh, is it an epi- is it an epidemic it's um that's a a really cool question to have because my own experience i if somebody would have told me like 10 years ago oh you're going to be homeless i'm like Are you kidding me mm-hmm. you know i was working i was working hard i had money put away and then you know things happen unfortunately and um i don't even know if it's an epidemic I don't know if it's a situation that some people definitely take advantage of. Like, some people make homelessness a a, a part of life. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of people that are in the shelters where I've stayed, or the two that I've stayed in, where they had been there for, like, 10, 15 years. I'm like, wow. And they're okay with it. Yeah. I'm like, I hated 10 or 15 days. Like, your life feels like it's the rug is pulled right from underneath you, and it's like, why would I want to be in this environment? I get the safety, like, you know, being under a roof, having a bed to sleep on. I get it. But like you said, um, you know, some guy that's sitting out there, he's begging for money. All he needs is a good, you know, uh, kick in the butt and say, let's go. We can do this. Mm -hmm. Again, somebody to advocate for him. Somebody to encourage him, saying, you can do this. Where he'd rather turn to, you know, his substances and whatnot and think, well, I'm going to drink it away or I'm going to smoke it away. And, you know, someday somebody's going to offer me that cushy job again. Well, it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't. So is it an epidemic? To some degree. Is it some people's choices on how they want to live? Absolutely. Can we fix it? I think we can. I think it's shocking how many people you see, like, because I'm on disability and, you know, the majority of my check goes to my rent because I need to have a roof over my head. That's essential to me. Um, I couldn't imagine anything related to homelessness or living in a shelter. I just couldn't imagine it. But there's a lot of people that line up on the last of the month um, for ODSP that are getting a check. Um, They're receiving money, but they have no homes. So that money is going towards, you know, their things like their substances and, you know, basic eating and, you know, just their ability to even function on the street of itself. Like, yeah, that that's what that money goes towards. And I wonder why can't they put it towards something more productive? Why can't they find a place to live? Why do we have to have a seven to 10 year wait list for subsidized housing? You know, I think it's a I think it's 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 definitely I would consider definitely it's an epidemic the amount of homeless people I see just even in the mall you know they hang out in there and they're they're just they're picking up cigarette butts they're Is, are we are we I think that's kind of we're skewing that kind of number there because I mean we are in Toronto I mean this is the I hate. To, oh, I'm going to say it proudly. This is the center of the country. Okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, Amen. Um, someone else. Someone else might not agree with that, and that's fine. That's but, okay. uh, Vancouver might um, not agree. Yeah, Vancouver's like no, 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 no way. Montreal's like forget you. Um, but I mean, uh, so I think that we're we, here. We're seeing the worst of the worst. Is that fair? I think that's something that I could, I would say it's fair to say, and and I know like I've traveled to other countries and I've seen you know. A lot worse. Mm-hmm. Um, however, their populations might not compare, so the numbers are right, skewed. The, the numbers Absolutely. are skewed. But I'm, I'm, I mean, there's a lot of. But I also see a lot of resources out here. Um, like I, I know when I'm walking through City Hall, at, um, at sometimes during the day, there's like this. Uh, sometimes they have like a truck there that's just giving out food, or sometimes they're, they're giving out through some well, some door near the courthouse. Um, I don't know. I just. I look at it for like you were saying um a bachelor apartment's fifteen hundred dollars in rent you know and i know that very well um and i bust my ass every month to try and pay something like that um and what's stopping somebody else from doing that and then from 
my vantage point or from this perspective, why should I care? Absolutely, you're absolutely right. Uh, I, I, just, 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 absolutely for, just, just, right. just, just for just for conversation sake. You know, you know it's like, even even the way, like you say, like I said, when you know people will stay in a shelter for 10, 15 years, and it's their attitude is like, why bother? Uh, because it's going to help build your self esteem. It's going to give you a purpose to keep going, to move up instead of sideways. Give you a reason to sort of maybe re-grab that hope and, and hold on to it and maybe see out there that, you know, you see that little glimmer, like that little light at the end of the tunnel is not always the train coming through. It's also, <laughs> yeah. it's not always the train, right? Sometimes it's that little glimmer of hope and, you know, do we, I don't want to shoot down by all means, thank God for the shelters that we do have around the city and that we do have a place like out of the cold and that we do have a place to sleep and whatnot. But why don't we have more of them? Like some of the churches should be opening up their doors. It's, it's been really cold out there. And if, you know, the other night, if I wanted to sleep out of the cold, um, you had to line up. If you got your ticket, that's fine. If you didn't make it, you didn't make the team. See ya. So there's just not enough there's shelters. Not enough. I don't I don't think that there's enough. So should we be we should be creating more shelters? Um more safe havens. More safe havens. More okay. safe havens. At least at what, but at what cost? With, at what cost are we doing that? You know, we've put so much into building these beautiful condos. Mm-hmm. Why don't we get a like an empty building and turning it into beautiful homes for people that just need a roof over their heads and their families and you know and charge them like gear to income what they can afford and what they you know should be able to like why do I have to choose or anybody for that matter why do we have to choose if we have to, if we're gonna eat or if we're gonna have to pay that extra bill or get our meds. We should be able to have a little bit for everything. Yeah, we can only save so much. But when you're only starting with 400, it doesn't duplicate magically. It's not that pixie dust. What about relocation? Like, this is, I, I'm, I'm just, this is off the top of my head. But what about, like, you know, like, obviously Toronto is one of the most expensive cities in the country. What about relocating to Kitchener? I would relocate to Kitchener if they had places out there. I had a... Mm. A, an opportunity was in Waterloo, and so I said, "Sure, I'll move to Waterloo." Type of thing. Yeah, but it's still a four-month wait. All right, let's try again. Mm. How about London? Sure, uh, it's a six-month wait. Okay, well, why don't we try something that's a little shorter, and you know, work from there. Give so, me some other opportunities. What's what's what is the delay based off? Is it, is it the fact that? Uh, once someone gets into this type of um, subsidized situation, they're not leaving. They're not leaving. Yeah. They're no, not, yeah. they're not leaving. Okay, so trust me, Jr. Once you get like honestly, they're grounded. Yep. I've told you about my place. Like my place is like it's it's not geared to income. It's market rent. So there's subsidized housing in my building, but mine I pay a little bit more rent than what the subsidized housing would pay, but less than what. Like for instance, you Jr. would pay. So if I have another episode, for instance. They can keep my apartment for me for up to a year. Okay. So they can keep it under my name. It's my apartment. It doesn't matter if I destroy the place or do whatever in the place for my episode. This place is a it's, it's community housing, and they will keep that space for a year. You know, okay. I've only ever seen in the three years that I've lived there, I've only seen on my floor one person move out, and that place was licked, taken up lickety split. Hmm. Someone's already moved in. Like it's there's not enough. There's not enough space, but my frustration also comes from, and I'm going to go back to um, the ODSP. I'm not saying you shouldn't give homeless people money because they need some money, but the amount of money you're giving, maybe that some of that income that you're giving them could be geared towards giving some money to a church so they could buy some beds or, you know, donating some money to a soup kitchen so they can expand to have more people in there for food. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I feel like 
I'm not accusing anyone. I don't know what people do with their checks. I only know what I do with mine. But I know there's a lot of like, even in my space where I live, like people wait for their checks so they can go and get some drugs. Like that's what that's what that's what makes them function in a day. That's what makes Mm -hmm. them happy. That's what makes them, you know, keep going is sometimes the the substance abuse. And um, I remember seeing in a documentary just recently uh, someone was asking a man, you know, why are you homeless? And he's like, I used to work at that hospital. And true, I don't know if this is true or not, because he could have mm-hmm. been delusional. Mm-hmm. But I used to work in that hospital right across the street as a um, nurse in the ER. And I lost my job. And now I'm on the streets. I couldn't keep up with my bills. I couldn't pay my way. And now I'm on the street. And there's no one who cares. And people walk over me. And nobody cares about, you know, my situation. And nobody cares to help me. You know, like... But that's true. That's 100% true. No one does care about you. You got to care about yourself. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, so... Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I look at it like... Yeah, I I feel sorry uh, for a homeless person if I... You have empathy. I have empathy, but you know what? Like, hey, I'm out here trying to make sure that I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? If the second my rent's late... There's going to be an eviction notice on my door. Exactly. And I'll be right beside you. And I'll be right beside you. So I I have to be concerned about myself. And... um, I don't know. Like sometimes when you get kicked down, you got you got to like do what you got to do. Sometimes are we willing to make the sacrifices to you know get ourselves where we need to be? I'm ready. I'm ready to make any sacrifice I have to. If it's going to mean that I have to move to Jamaica, got to do what you got to do. <laughs> I'll make that sacrifice. You know? But I'm just saying, if I have to move to London, well, I relocate to London. If I have to relocate to Kitchener Waterloo and they're telling me, well, here it's only six months, okay. In the six months, like where I stayed at my previous shelter, is somebody gonna help me? Don't do it for me. Oh, by the grace of God, no. But where do I go? Show me. I've had more help with my little urban angel this past week than I've had in in, in a year and a half. She has shown me more. Let's try this. Oh, we could try this. Here, let me see if I can get somebody on the phone. And I, I just watch and I think, girl, you're just as in the same situation with I am, only you have a permanent house. You're still helping. You're still dealing with your own um, mental health issues and you're still dealing with your own situation. But it's like, oh, let's try this. Maybe this will work. Yeah, let me call this person. So is it the workload that these these caseworkers have? Is it In the same cause... breath, yeah, I think they do have a big workload, but there's a lot of people out there that are peer support workers. Like let's get them on the payroll. Let's get mm. them volunteers in there to do the ad, the advocacy. Advocacy. Yeah. They go out there and let them do it. You know, like people that are working towards our peer support specialists, whatever, put them out there on the front line. And I and I, and I are both in peer support um, training right now. So, like, kudos to you for not letting this, you know, terrible situation stand in the way of your goals uh, and what you want to do in life. Um, you're still, even in your distress, you're still helping people in distress, and that to me is an amazing amazing quality thanks so peer and i think it, it's true having peer support workers to advocate for you know people like you or people like me mm-hmm. um when we're in these situations is is probably a key component so maybe something that shelters need to consider ha- having more of well, did you yeah. have peer support workers at the shelter no mm. and i start i i wanted to start a little uh group I thought being that will be experience for me and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was shunned upon. It said, like, why do you want to help these people? Why not? Mm-hmm. Especially the ones that are more vulnerable or the ones that have that are in recovery. Let's let them deal with their recovery process while we get them that extra harness to hold on. Don't throw them out of the plane and throw them a backpack and say, sink or float. Oh man, I don't even. I don't know. I don't know what a solution is. I don't. I'm. I'm totally at a loss because I can understand both sides, you know. And like I understand one side where it's like 
do it for yourself. Like, we've all done it for ourselves. Do it for yourself. But I also understand the side that's like, look, I'm, I need help. I'm, I, I'm, I'm asking for help. Can someone help me? You know, mm-hmm. um, I understand. And then there's also the other, there's the third side of the coin where it's like, hey, I'm just going to kick it. As you said, some people that are just like doing the shelter life. It's their, it's, it's, that's their thing. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, it, like, I don't know what direction. Like, I don't know where to go. I don't know what. Sorry. Being homeless is, um, you know, people always say it's such a, it's it's kind of a blessing to put on that thing because you do learn a lot about yourself. And when the going get tough, the tough do get going. But like, again, when, when you were saying about, you know, do you step over the ones that are laying there on the ground? And, like, I have this gentleman that I used to deal with at, you know, near where I lived, and every morning I would see him, and he got to know my name. So it's like, Anna, um, you got some money for me this morning? And I'd say to him, sweetie, my things haven't changed overnight. What do you, what would you like? I'd make, you know, I always knew I'd see him, so I always made him a lunch. Mm. He always had something to eat, something warm. Like sometimes I'd make soup and I'd bring it to him in the morning, and he'd be like, like you could see it. He was a little old gentleman, and he would like he'd be yelling at the top of his lungs, "Thank you, my belly thanks you." Okay, it's it's all good. It'll all. It's we just have to work it. Like I don't think being homeless is a single thing. We have to work as a team. We have to work as, um, again, I'm going to toot that whole peer support specialist type thing. We have to work with people that genuinely care that have lived it or experienced it or are living with it or not just somebody that has learned it out of books and said well or the newspaper because the newspaper I think makes homelessness look glamorous Mm. well there's you know homeless shelters that you can go to see what happens behind those doors I don't know. I was always terrified of it. My mom had wanted me to go a couple of years ago. She wasn't going to let me back in the house and she mm-hmm. wanted me to stay in a shelter. And I'm like, no, nah, I can't do it. Um, I, like, I, I really like my stuff. I'm not trying to be like glib, but I enjoy mm-hmm. my stuff and I enjoy my physical safety. Um, I don't want to get like punched out. I don't want to get physically injured. You know, it's it's all of those stresses that you have to worry about, like sleeping literally on your stuff so people won't steal it. I mean, I've heard stories. I've heard stories. You know, I've never lived it, but I've heard stories and they've been, whew. I'll share this with you. I didn't think I was going to, but I'm going to do my best to share in this. I remember the first night I slept outside, like you say, you have to sleep on your stuff. And I had everything handcuffed to me, oh my God. tied up because I was afraid somebody was going to take my pillow or my monkey or my, anything that kept me, gave me a little bit of comfort. And I remember getting up in the morning, startled out of my sleep, and somebody just wanted my pillow because they were, they, you know, the, the, the ground was hard. And I, I thought I was going to bust into a, like, you know, like, ninja. And I thought, this is mine. Like, everything was tied down. Like, I had the, over my fingers, so I felt it. And the backpacks that we got from the Homeless Connect, they have a, a wrist strap. And like you say, you cuddle with everything. And the last thing I thought was going to be stolen were my meds. And I'm like, wow, that's the only thing I didn't have close to my heart. And it's like, you know, and and then it's like, wow. But you think that person that stole it, did they need it more than I did? Or would they need it more than I did? Mm, That's a question, yeah. That is the question. Anytime I lose money, that's what I say to myself. Like, someone else needed it more than me. Yeah, exactly. Someone else needed it more. And if somebody takes my pillow, you know, we all know by a higher power, he'll replace it with two. Mm -hmm. We're good to go. (laughs) We're good to go. So what's your next step? Like, I know you're somewhere safe right now. Everything's, you know, you're safe for now. But what's your next, um, what's going to be your next move, do you think? Well, I have an appointment on Monday with the housing girl. Mm-hmm. which I'm actually quite excited about. And their um, transitional homes are for three years, up to three years. Okay. Which is nice. It'll be in the center of the city. I can still continue schooling. I can finish my uh, peer support specialist 
mm-hmm. classes. I'm so excited about that, and um, and and continue on. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep walking. I'm gonna keep up the pace. I I yeah. There are some mornings when I'm not walking this fast, but I, you know, one baby step at a time. I, I, I'm gonna make it. I'm determined to find myself a place to live. Mm-hmm. And you know, if it's gonna take a new transitional home, it's gonna take a new transitional home. And what are you going to do differently in this transitional home than you did in your last transitional home? I am going to advocate for myself a lot faster than I did. I am like I'll get support from outside. Check in with a, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't have a psychiatrist, and it's with somebody that's going to work with me, not tell me what to do, mm-hmm. but work with me. I don't want to be told what to do. Like you say, I'm too stubborn. I'm stubborn for that. But this is what we should... Why don't we try this? Why don't you, but as long as I know that I have a place to go and I have a roof over my head and I have a pillow and a blanket to keep me warm, it'll keep me going during the day. It'll give me something to to pull through because mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about, oh, sh- you know, where am I going to sleep tonight? Or if I know I'm going home during the day, I will walk until my feet... You know, can't walk anymore, mm-hmm. and I'll find a place to live, and I'll ask for help. Swallow mm-hmm. my pride sometimes. Okay. Okay. Chair, do you have anything else to say? To add? Nope. Well, Anna, I know things are tough right now, and I can't imagine, you know, what you're going through. But I'm glad that you have somewhere safe to go to, um, that you're taking the necessary steps you need to take to move forward. Um, I wish you all of the very, very best. Oh, thank you. Um, I actually wanted to know, though, what what what's the biggest overall, like living this nomadic lifestyle that you've had to live over the last few years, mm-hmm. what would be the biggest lesson you learn like from it? I did want to ask that before we... Oh, that's fine. That's fine. The biggest lesson that I've learned from all of this is that at the end of the day, um, I'm important. I'm not... I'm not going to be a victim anymore. I'm going to be that voice that yells and screams until I'm heard. I want to be heard. I want to be somebody's advocate. And I want to be... um, you know, the way headline news is, you know, like five people won the lottery. Well, Anna won the lottery. <laughs> you won the lottery. And guess, guess what? She's opened up four new office buildings for the homeless to have a, a roof over their head and to feed them and then hire a really lot of good-looking guys to cook for us. I just thought I'd put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure they're taken care of, too, the way I was... Keep a positive note. Don't don't weigh it down on myself so much. Don't make myself feel so guilty. Mm-hmm. Shame. It's it's not a pretty picture, but I'm gonna fight it every step of the way. All right. And I'm going to because I have people that believe in me. Absolutely, I'm one of them. Yes, you are, girl. Yes, mm-hmm. you are. <laughs> Well, if you guys would like to get in touch with Anna, just to share some kind words, you know, if you can relate at all, if you've been through what she's going through and you just want to say hello and, um, you know, whatever, (laughs) or you want to talk to me or JR, uh, JR, please tell them how they can reach us. Yeah, definitely. You can reach us at dish, D-Y-S-H at daintydish.com. That's D-A-I-N-T-Y-D-Y-S-H.com. Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts. Give us five. You deserve five. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate it. Subscribe. Um, if you're listening to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, please give us a like, some feedback. We truly appreciate it. We love it so much. Uh, thank you so much for listening. That's it for me. All right. With that said, that has been the dish of the day. I hope you all have yourselves a very, very, very happy update. <laughs>